I am confident that you will find these rewards to be adequate compensation for your efforts. You can also expect certain Terran organizations to approach you for your help in the future. Once again, the Terran people thank you for your service. We look forward to your continued assistance. Good luck out there. Does anybody ever tell you, lady, you talk too fast? Welcome back, everybody, to X4 Foundations. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are finally going to receive our promotion from the Terran Protectorate to be the Hero of Humanity, or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> um, and then we're going to go right on over to Earth and Mars, or Moon, Earth and the Moon, and discover the shipyard and all that kind of stuff, and get geared up to get ourselves an Asgard and some other stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and talk to Liu Kapoor first. As a true ally to the Terran Protectorate, please allow me to present you with this ring. In recognition of your loyalty, you are rewarded with unfettered access to the soul system. Of course, this rank comes with benefits beyond that as well. Should you prove to be unworthy of the trust placed in you, these privileges will be revoked. Although, should it come to that, a revoked license would be the least of your worries. I am confident that you will find these rewards to be adequate compensation for your efforts. You can also expect certain Terran organizations to approach you for your help in the future. Once again, the Terran people thank you for your service. We look forward to your continued assistance. Good luck out there. Does anybody ever tell you, lady, you talk too fast? <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, we are going to look at licenses. We're going to spend a god-awful amount of money to get access to their station so I don't have to worry about satellites for trading purposes. Whew, 10000 bucks, poof, just like that. Um, but Good luck out there. I think it'll be worth it in the long run. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is... Blueprint. Wait a second, hold on. Good luck out there. Good luck out there. If I do license... So... Good luck out there. Don't I need to buy a license to get to get their ship? Like a capital license ship? The the blueprint is more money than I think I have on hand right now. Good luck out there. How much money do I have on hand? Yeah, it's 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 I got two hundred thirty. 38 million. The <laughs> blueprint's 260 something. Okay, hold on a second. Let's look at something. If we go here and we go here and we go here and we go here. Capital. Oh, okay. Yeah, we do have it. Capital equipment license, capital ship license. <clears throat> so we, we, I think we just got that automatically after we received the promotion, but then we had to pay for the trade offer subscription. You cannot see the orders of ships. You are not allowed to teleport to stations. You are not allowed to use the paint modification theme of this faction. So I'm not sure how I get access to those three things. Um, maybe I have to go through their storyline or something. Yeah, not sure. Um, I also went and got <clears throat> the promotion uh, from Ministry of Finance, too. So now I have... Uh, you know, all of, all of their high-end stuff. We are... Let's go back to here for a second. We are one point away from uh, hitting 20 with HOP. And I, I, I'm already plus 8 with the free families. We started off with minus 5. Oh, fallen families. Where, who's the fallen families? These are free families. Oh, incidentally, I did find uh, this sector after I left you guys in the last episode. Uh, I don't even know who or where the fallen families are. Uh, maybe that's something that doesn't appear until you do Split Vendetta storyline? Not really sure. Um, and while we're on this topic, uh, I also... Discovered Company Regard, Turquoise C. Uh, one of these is owned by Talati. One of them is not. It's just open. And I found Scale Plate Green, which I remember from the older games. But it is absolutely taken over by the Xenon. So, this... Aside from... I know there's a couple of sectors, including... What's it called? Uh, Avarice... Um, that, we, you know, it doesn't become available until you do storyline missions. 
But as far as everything that I can discover just by flying around without doing storyline missions, I've got just about everything there is. I think, however, that there is pro there's got to be a, a, another gate in here because, and I didn't really, you know, look, thoroughly look, because I don't ever remember seeing a sector that only has one of these, you know, smaller subsectors without at least one more. So uh, at some point I should probably go back there and, and give that one more look to see if there's something else there. But otherwise, um, I think I've pretty much uncovered all the, the sectors that are available. Again, sands to the storyline sectors. And of course, we have to do Earth and Moon, uh, but we're going to do that in this episode. Anyway, so, okay. Um, speaking of which, why don't we hop in our ship? And this is the gate that leads to the Earth and Moon sector. When we tried to approach that gate before we got this promotion... Um, we weren't able to do so because they told us, turn around or we're going to blow you up kind of thing. So, all right, well, let's head on over there and go check out the Earth and the Moon sectors, see if we can find the shipyard, and then start thinking about an Asgard. Very exciting. All right, guys, here we go. We are heading to the Earth and the Moon. Entering the Moon. The Moon. Awesome! Hey, there it is! Look at that moon. That looks familiar. Okay. So, um, why don't we... Let's do a long range. <coughs> Excuse me. Orbital Defense Station, MRE Packing Facility. Yeah, those are stations too. Um, so why don't we, let's go north and we'll fly by these two stations here and discover them. Actually see three stations off in the distance there. Oh, there's the earth. Look at that. So cool. In Terran conflict, um, the Earth had a had like a, a ring all the way around it in the orbit. It's very cool, but I think that got destroyed if I remember right. Okay. Let's stop here. That looks like that was a trading station. Yep, orbital trading station. see a station off in the distance there, uh, but let's do another scan. Well, actually, that might be a gate. I'm not sure. Really, that scan didn't reveal anything. How interesting. This must be a big sector. stations actually over here or no that's those are super highway gates ah okay yep those are super highway gates okay uh, there's a station over there and some stations over here let's go check them out Well, let's read what the game has to say about the Earth, too. Or about the moon, rather. The moon's created surface bears witness to the first tentative steps taken by humankind in their journey to the stars. As the stepping stone between Earth and the rest of the solar system, it also holds a position of a great strategic importance as part of the Protectorate's zero-tolerance policy. Let's stop here for a second before we blow way out of the sector. <clears throat> Uh, 
towards unauthorized approach to Earth, it is the first sector requiring a protectorate inner core access license to enter. Naturally enough, because of the Taurus incident, I think ta the Taurus was the ring thingy I was talking about. The moon is heavily pol uh, policed by Terran protector patrols to ensure that the moon stays off limits, even to the most normal soul citizens. Huh. Okay. <clears throat> I don't remember exactly how all that went down. I just know that it did go down. Uh, you know, the d destruction of the ring. Oh, you know what? That looks like that could be a shipyard over there. Let's go that way. We'll buzz these two stations, too, just to see what they are. Okay, those are just pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. Yeah, this has got to be the shipyard here. Yep, it is. Okay, cool. I actually don't have any weapons on this scout. I need to get some on there. I think this is the docking bay here. Docking granted. Wait, where is it? Up here. I actually like the Terran docks. I think they're cool looking. Um, here we go. I think it's cool that they're covered, you know, from a defensive standpoint, anyway. Successfully docked. Okay. So. It's an honor to have you aboard. Let's actually get up and go check out the shipyard sales place. This place is so huge once you get inside of it. It doesn't look like it's that big when you're flying to it, but when you get in and it's like, oh my goodness, this place is huge. All right, let's go to the ship dealership. Hello. Hello. How can you walk right through that door when it's moving like that? Hey, cut it out. All right. Hello, lady. Parveen Kojima. How you doing? Hello there. Hello there. Okay. Um, uh, Buy ships. How much is this thing going to cost us? Wait a minute. This ship is no longer offered for sale to third parties. What? What? What the hell? What does that mean? I got the capital license. No! You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> I've been waiting so long to get an Asgard. What the hell? This ship is no longer offered for sale to third parties. So what the... Does that mean I have to be a Terran to get this ship at all? Am I never going to be able to get it in this playthrough? Oh, man, that sucks. You've got to be kidding me. I can't even select the loadout just to see how much it would cost. The chassis alone is $23 million. Oh, no. Um... Lady? You gotta be kidding me. Seriously, you're, this is a joke, right? Hello there. Mother! I don't think I can buy that from Sigaris. I've already looked. Let's just double check in case I screwed something up. Nope, they don't even have it for sale. Um. This really sucks. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm disappointed. All right. I'm going to... I'm going to do some research on this. I'll be right back. All right, guys. I'm back. Um, so here's the deal. I did, uh, did a little bit of reading on this, and I can't buy... Um, the Asgard or the Sin. Period. I just can't do it. Um, so I have two options. I either buy the blueprint, which is fine and good, but it's not that simple because 
Not only do I have to buy the blueprint for the ship itself, but I have to have a shipyard. I have to buy other blueprints for the weapons and that sort of thing, which the long-term plan is that we, we will work towards doing that. But the only, the only other option is to try and capture one, which doesn't fit uh, with this playthrough's um, character, right? Because we're, we're a good guy. We're, we've, we've already said we're not doing any pirating or anything like that. And uh, so from a role-playing perspective, it wouldn't make sense <clears throat> for me to try and capture, um, well, any innocent ship for that matter uh, that's not an enemy, let alone the Terrans who I just worked so hard to, whoops, uh, to become friends with. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. So th there's, there's a few things to consider here. Um, let's go back to the ship dealership. What I can get right now from the Terrans is probably the second best destroyer in the game. The first best destroyer from everything I've been hearing is the Sin, but that, of course, is not available to us right now. Um, the second best destroyer, I think, in the game is the Osaka. And the reason that I think Hello that there. is because the Osaka um, has... Um, it doesn't quite have the same firepower as Good the Rattlesnake, but what it does have is it has... Uh, it's pretty much better in just about every other way, but specifically for station busting, it's got more range. The biggest problem with the Rattlesnake to, you know, in terms of using it to destroy stations is the range is just too short. Now, I can manage that if I'm flying it myself, but I can only fly one ship at a time. So purchasing a fleet of rattlesnakes to destroy stations isn't going to make sense because they're going to get destroyed. Uh, so if we go just to kind of look at a couple things here, if we go to uh, the encyclopedia, OK, I already have the Osaka up. I have the Odysseus E, uh, which I already own one of those. But you can see that um, the Osaka has about a third more firepower, and that's simply because it's got uh, three main batteries, whereas the Odysseus only has two. Um, the Rattlesnake does more damage than the Osaka, but it's got a really short range, and so it's just too short for the AI to control without potentially losing the ship. Um... The downside to the Osaka is that it's like over twice as much as these other ships. It's very, very expensive. But I mean, you know, the other downside to it is really slow too. But at the end of the day, if it's the best ship for the job in terms of what we can get at this point in time, then it seems to me like that's probably the way we want to go. One thing I really like about the Odysseus, though, is it does it. You can dock a medium ship there, so you know we could get. In fact, I'm almost certainly going to get at least one gin, which is the gunship, the Terran gunship, and then you can just dock it there, and then add, add six additional turrets to the ship's defense. So we're going to do that regardless because we already have the Odysseus, anyways. Um, so what I'm thinking is. Uh, and I've already, you know, I've already looked at the Behemoth, and I've already looked at the the Talati Osprey or whatever their, you know, their destroyer is, and they're they're just not they're, they're meh. Um, and then and the normal Odysseus too. So, so I think what we what if I if I want a fleet that can destroy stations in a reasonable amount of time then we're going to need to add some Osakas to the fleet. Um, we can afford to do that. Uh, it's going to cost us a lot of money, but we can afford it. The The other challenge here, at least immediate challenge, is that I can only purchase one right now. If I try and purchase more, then it's going to need metallic lattice or whatever it's called. Um, you know, So we're going to have to start gathering that up if we want more than one, which I do. So... That's kind of what I'm thinking right now in terms of, uh, you know, building up a fleet that can destroy stations, specifically destroy Xenon stations. Um, so, uh, in, in terms of kind of my overall plan, though, what I think I'm going to do is, 
I think we're going to shore up Heretic's End, this gate here, with one of our defense platforms. Because the Xenon have not only taken over Family Jin, but now they've taken over Wretched Skies. And it's only a matter of time, and maybe not even that much time, before they move down into Wretched Skies 5. And then, of course, the next logical place for them to come down is into Heretic's Inn. And if they take over Heretic's Inn, then that pretty much blocks our pathway into Boron Space, which we don't want to have happen. So I'm thinking we plop down a defense platform here to guard this gate and blockade it. And then work to try and save Xyarth uh, and Xyarth's Dominion 4 in particular because that's where the shipyard and the wharf is and probably put a defense station here I, I don't think I, I don't see much point at this point now in trying, trying to save Family Jin um, I think it's just lost but what we could do is we could put a defense platform here in Family Newt to, to prevent the Xenon from moving this direction and then um, either put a, a defense platform here at two grand or what would be even better if we could pull it off is to try and kick the Xenon out of Fires of Defeat. The only problem with that plan though is we have to, we have to block both, blockade both this gate and that gate. And Tharka's Ravine 24 is not doing too well so i i think we might have to give up on the free families now i can fly over there um and in fact we've already gotten to, to uh level 10 with them where are we at or actually we're at 12 now because i've got those uh well i guess i didn't tell you guys this i've got three couriers over there just you know trading like crazy and it's shooting up our rep with them really quick um so we might go over there, look at their blueprints, and buy anything that we think we might uh, we might want in the future, and then leave them to their fate. Um, because it's just, you know, with where I'm currently at in the game, I think it's just too much for me to try and save both the free families and Xyarth at the same time. Uh, plus the fact that now we also have to throw in protecting Heretic's End, which is essentially a, a protecting our trade route into Boron Space which I wasn't planning on doing until I realized that these guys are already moving fast uh, over this direction. So that just adds, you know, that much more that we have to do. So um, now let's talk about um, a home sector. Now that I've uncovered the majority of the map here, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and continue ahead with my plan of building a home sector here in the Peleos' Fortune uh, uh, 6. <clears throat> and so the idea is that we put a trading station right here. Well, we'll also put a defense platform, but it, we'll, we start with a trading station right here because obviously it's the best place to do it. Um, nobody owns this sector. There is one Hatikba place, but that's not really a problem. And then we build a, an administration module thingy and we take over this sector and it becomes our home sector. And then... Uh, from there, we just start building out and we we, we build to drop my cargo. an infrastructure that allows us to eventually become self-sufficient. One other thing that appeals to me about doing that and, and starting to focus on that rather than try and take on the Xenon on a large scale is that it'll make the game a little more interesting later on. Um... As opposed to me, you know, trying to to fight the Xenon right now, um, and and what I mean by that is go on the offensive. So setting up the gates in those territories is really defensive, and then just kind of wait and see how things play out, and then later on, you know, when we become self-sufficient and we can build our own ships and us and amass our own fleet, then we can go and push the Xenon back. So that's kind of you know what's in my mind right now for you know, the continuation of this playthrough. Uh, one one bit of good news is that the Terrans have actually taken uh, Getsufuni away from the Xenon. This, this has been a Xenon sector for as long as I have discovered it. So that's good because what it does is it gives us, you know, a, nor a northerly passage into the Terran sectors in a relatively safe uh, manner. 
Um, so yeah, that that's good. It also prevents xenon, you know, from coming down into the void from Getsufune. Now I I still think there's probably going to be a pathway from here up through here. Um, so we might have to give that some consideration later on. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So I guess the first step to doing that, uh, I know we need we still need to go uh, check out the Earth too, and we'll do that at the very end of this episode. Uh, but what I think I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and purchase. Uh, I already got a high. Oh yeah, let's actually talk about the high preset here. So, um, we just go with the all-around engine. You, you don't get that much more for the travel engine. It's just not worth it. Um, the Terran shields, which are phenomenal. I'm going to go just with the, the less expensive thruster because, well, let's see. Yeah, that adds 10 million. Well, not quite 10 million. About 7, almost 7 million to the price. Um... I mean, shoot, it would be good to be able to bring this to bear uh, more quickly, but that's a lot of extra money. We could go back to, you know, middle of the road. Yeah, you know what? Let's just go with middle of the road. That only adds like another million or so. Um, you know, the, the Mark III Terran shield generators, that's a no-brainer. Um, oh, I guess the... I guess this only has two main batteries. I thought I had three. Okay, well, they're, they're definitely more powerful than the ones on the Odysseus, like by a third. Hmm. Okay, so I guess there's only two, but that's fine. They're still more powerful. And again, uh, if we look in the encyclopedia for these, this ha these have a range of almost nine kilometers, uh, which is still far enough away from, you know, the Xenon. And the ones you have to worry about the most for Xenon stations are the Graviton turrets, and I think those have a six point something or other kilometer range so that still allows this ship to stay almost you know at least a two solid kilometers further out and the ai should be hopefully anyways smart enough to to stay far enough away as long as it's in range um okay so anyway back to this now for the turret groups because the the main role of this of these destroyers is going to be station busters though you know obviously we can use them against you know k's as well um i'm going to give their large turrets dumb fire missiles um and then um for their medium turrets what i want to do with those because I, I don't have the option for plasma turrets now i suppose i don't know can you fit other races plasma turrets on Terran ships. We, I guess we could look at that in the encyclopedia. Um, but, I mean, having heavy dumbfire missiles is not a bad idea for, for the role of this ship, though. And we would have three of them firing. So, uh, let's just kind of keep it that way for now. Now, as far as the medium slots, basically I'm going to put three beams and three uh, wait a minute. Did something not get saved here? Okay. Well, the idea is to put three beams and, and three flak turrets, which, of course, we'll have to fly to Argon space to fit that on. Which means, though, that we should be able, be able to put plasmas on there then, too. <coughs> the thing I don't like about the missiles is that, you know, you have to, you have to keep them restocked. Um, whereas if we just put plasmas on there... It's, fi you know, fire and forget, literally. <laughs> so what if we do this? Let's go back to here. And let's go to the Osaka build-out. Um, and go to turrets. Yeah, this would seem to suggest that we can put plasma turrets on here. And if that's the case... I kind of like that idea. Is there a difference between an Argon Plasma Turret and a Paranid in terms of damage? There is, and the Argon does quite a bit more damage than the Paranid does. How interesting. What about the Split? The Split does even more damage than the Argon one. No surprise there. 
What's this? A Talati? Yeah, that does less damage. It'll be easier to put Argon on there than Split, though, because we got we got to take the ship all the way up into Split space to get that on there. Um, and there's not a huge difference. So right now, the Split Plasma Turret is showing uh, 339. And if we put the Argon on, it's 327. So it's it's not that much difference in terms of the the damage. And it's going to be way easier to fit these with Argons than splits. Uh, let's look at something here. What is the range on these? Yeah, these are 8.6 kilometers. Uh, what's the range on the split plasma turrets? Just out of curiosity. Oh, yeah, they they are actually have less range. Okay, so that, that is already a deal breaker for using the split plasma turrets. All right, well, I, I, I think I'm liking that idea better then. So let's go back to here. There, we can just talk to this lady. Hello there. Hello there. Go back to large, and we're going to go to Osaka. I'm going to choose high preset OG. Uh, we want to switch. We're going to switch to this. It just gives us a little bit more maneuverability, without adding nine million more dollars to the price. Whereas this one, yeah, that's just crazy. I mean, yeah, uh, we're going to go with the Mark II. Uh, we got the shield generators, so those are good. We got the main batteries. So basically, we don't want any turrets. We don't want any large turrets from Terran. But we do want to make sure that we have the Terran shields, which we do. For mediums, I want... Where is one at? Okay, one's in the back. Okay, so we're going to leave that one empty, and we're going to put... A flag turret there. Two is down below. Hello. We'll leave that empty for a flag turret. Three is up above. Let's put a beam turret in three. Four is down below. We'll put a flag turret there. Five is down below. We'll put a flag turret there. And six will have a beam turret. So it's three and six. So we'll have one beam on top, basically, and one beam on the bottom. Okay, so this is the software. We're just, I, I'm not planning on flying these ships myself. I mean, I might hop in them and fly them a little bit here and there, but uh, so we're putting basic software on. Uh, we don't need these dumb fire missiles now, so let's take those back off. Uh, but we have a full complement of repair drones, a few satellites, some laser towers, some flares. And the crew is captain and service crew. Okay, so that the price is still 39 million and change. Let's overwrite the loadout. And that's still not the end price because because we still have to take this to Argon space to get the flak turrets and the plasma turrets on it, which is going to be a few more million, I'm sure. All right, so... Uh, oh man, now now even just one needs these. When I was checking this earlier, I was able to get one. Oh man, crap. Okay, well, I think I want a, an absolute minimum of two of these ships uh, and maybe even three or four. But we're going to have to grind metallic micro lattice to make all that happen. And I don't know how long that will take, um, but I guess it takes as long as it takes. Um, so why don't we start with two of these ships? And that means we're going to have to grind 35,000 and change metallic micro lattice. But let's go ahead and, and purchase two. And then... 
what I'm gonna do is I'm uh, I'll you know get that stuff ground up ground up sounds like I'm making coffee <laughs> um and then when those ships are ready then we'll fly them to Argon Prime and get the flak turrets and the plasma turrets fitted on them and then we'll be ready to take them into uh, our service uh, so that'll give us a total of four destroyers we have the rattlesnake and the Odysseus too and go from there and then like I said I'm going to be working on uh, building those defense platforms in those locations that I, I told you about and hopefully I can get them up and running before the Xenon get to the point where they're ready to move into those sectors I was asked to drop I, my cargo station yeah you're all right uh, I don't want, like I said, I don't want uh, the boron space blocked off from us. So we've got to protect heretics in, and that's probably going to be actually the first place we're going to put, put a tower down. And hopefully, you know, um, Zyrark can, can hold out until I can get to him. Okay, so to finish the rest of this episode, uh, we need to go to Earth. So that means we want to go here, I'm guessing. Start guidance to object. And yeah, let's go check out the Earth. There she is. Nice. Looks like Earth to me. Okay, so I'm guessing since the wharf and shipyard are in different sectors that we probably don't have um, any significant stations here in Earth. There are some stations though. Oh, let's do a long range scan. Got some stations there. All right. We'll go, um, we'll fly this way and do another scan just to see what else is here. Taurus eternal segment. Oh, that looks like part of the, the old Taurus ring. Let's go check that out. Oh, neat. Yeah, that is part of the old Taurus ring. I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, why? otherwise it wouldn't be called Taurus. <laughs> so, uh, if for those of you who aren't familiar with the older game uh, and Terran Conflict in particular, this it looks like it's a remnant left over of the ring station that pretty much surrounded the entire earth and it got destroyed oh yeah look at that that's cool so this is probably not guessing not a functional station well actually can we dock here let's see docking not possible no not possible it says kind of look inside of here though interesting there's like some green mist stuff or something going on in there Huh. Way cool.
Gypsy. Okay, well that's cool. Um, all right, so I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode. And I have a lot of work to do. Um, and so my plan is to follow the plan that I just outlined uh, for you guys. And I'm not exactly sure when I will start the next episode. One thing to keep in mind, and if you guys watch other YouTubers, you know, do Let's Plays of this game. One thing, you know, that happens is the further you get in the game, the longer it takes to, you know, for me as a YouTuber to get out episodes because there's just so much off-camera stuff to do in between. And, and, you know, most of it, although I enjoy doing it myself, most of it's going to be kind of boring to make an actual Let's Play episode. So, you know, I will keep them coming um, as much as I can, you know, you know, taking into account that I have, you know, other series on the channel in real life and all that sort of thing, too. But you might see a little bit of a slowdown uh, in the videos moving forward as we start to progress into the later game. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind, but uh, I am definitely have a lot more planned for this series. And as I've mentioned to several of you in the comments, I'm also tentatively planning on starting a new series after this one's over. Possibly, you know, a pirating series or maybe one that's focused more on storyline and not so much on empire building or something like that. Um, so, you know, lots more X4 to come to come. That's what I'm trying to say. But it just it might be a little fewer and far further between than what you've seen up to this point. Um, so, you know, we'll see how things go, though. It might, uh, I might be able to still put out enough interesting content to keep them coming on a, you know, fairly regular basis. So we'll just, we'll play that by ear. Uh, but nevertheless, I will bring you guys back with an update uh, in the next episode on where we are with my plan. And we will go from there. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.